Hello and welcome to Love Work Life Training Academy. I hope everyone can hear me uh, and welcome to interview preparation and feedback uh, control to win. If you can hear me, uh, people are sort of logging in now, which is really good. If you can hear me, please put some notes in either the question and answer box or into the uh, webinar chat box. Be much appreciated. I hope everyone's well on this uh, Wednesday hump day and uh, they're having a, a reasonably good week considering uh, what the market is doing at the moment. Hi, Michelle. Thanks very good. I'm glad all's well there. Natalie, hope you're well. Keep seeing your posts flying up everywhere, which is good. People are still racking in, so I'll give it a couple of minutes for people to come in. Just whilst we're coming in, just thought I'd give you the, uh, the funny story of the week that happened to me. So I have a client. Uh, the client is, you know, you know, we're working really hard to sort of change things and do things uh, with what they're doing. And we were doing a... a zoom call uh myself and his business partner i think the usual, quite a serious conversation was uh incurring as we were moving along and we we're talking about what we can do with regarding a mentoring and coaching and development point of view when in the background his children appeared dressed as ghosts floating around hooting like ghosts which was extremely funny uh, as we both sat there watching his children there, his business partner was struggling because he couldn't control himself, but nor was he recording, which is a bit of a shame because he was, I'd have been having it out there. So yeah, I want to know if anybody's had any other funny stories, especially on webinars such as this with things going on in the background, or if you've been on Zooms with clients and things like that, anything that you've occurred, it'd be always good to sort of share those type of stories. So let's kick off and let's sort of really work on interview preparation and feedback. Interview preparation and feedback to me is one of the key parts of recruitment and it's the part of recruitment I think is probably the least addressed and the least trained and I think if more people did their preparation thoroughly and properly then their interview to offer ratio would certainly hugely increase. So it's really important that we start to look at these type of things especially when we've got an opportunity like we have now to really sit and review our processes and work with what's going on. So today what we're going to cover um, hopefully it'll be in an hour is to understand the interview process to get the candidate and the clients to interview okay why basic preparation or why basic pre prepare and preparation is key trial closing why pre-interview preparation is key why in-depth interview feedback will earn you money and sure you don't lose control and the ease uh, so to ease the offer stage and the win-win to get results from there so why range interviews to me, it's a strange question, is arranging in the interviews and why we arrange interviews. An interview is a sign from a client that they have expressed an interest in a candidate. And to me, this is the first real game changer of recruitment. This is the first time that our reality is starting to really sink home. And I always say a rich man's uh, breakfast is a poor man's tea if not converted. And what the offer of an interview is, it is that rich man's breakfast. It's the first meal of the day and really if you want to convert your day into something big and have an absolute smashing tea now is the opportunity to really convert that but as i said more money is lost during this point of the sale than in any other part of the recruitment process and so how we prevent it is really important more candidates drop out at this stage and more clients lose interest at this stage than anywhere else so it's important that we address it and address it properly to ensure that when we come out into the new world that we are all over our clients and all over our candidates once we have an opportunity that now is looking realistic it's looking like it can generally be converted into a deal and that's where the game changer comes from being a cv to actually potential you can feel it you can touch it you can almost smell the opportunity happening in front of your eyes so arranging the interview with the client the question is always when do we start arranging the interview and as we've said all the way through this process that to arrange interviews with the client we need to start to negotiate the interview dates during the job specification stage the more we can interview uh, sort of the more we can consolidate our interview process at that stage the better it is for ourselves so what a lot of people end up doing is not being able to call the client or force the client 
into setting pre-interview dates. And so this is the first opportunity that we're going to have to set dates. So we have to probe for suitable dates and probe for suitable dates in the client's diary. Now the client will have his diary there with them. So we've got to make sure that when we're opening the client's diary, we're not just setting the first interview date, if it's perm or the second interview date, we're setting them there and then both at the same time. I'd always say on a permanent deal, never set your interview dates more than five days apart because you want to push the process through. You want to make sure that you make sure that you are in control of the process and we're not elongating it as much as possible. So we've got to then make sure that we are pushing on everything that we've talked about. So we want to recap the interview process that's going to happen. We need to know it inside out. Are there a tests? How many people will the interview uh, be interviewing? How long is the interview? What feedback will be like? If it's going to be a video interview, how many people are going to be attending the video interview? How many people are going to be using the interview? Are they going to be recording it? If so, what platform and why? Because there's an opportunity there that we can step in, we can have them to use our platforms, which therefore means that we can control the interview process a little bit better. It also means that we are in control of the tape of the, the interview, so we can use that further down the line to help improve our recruitment process, improve the client's recruitment process, and refine our strategy when looking to recruit new people. We also need to start to look at what the job specification has on the go. So we need to recap the job specification. What's changed since we last spoke? What are the key areas that they're looking for the candidate to impress them in? What would they love to have and what would they like to have and what they intend to have are all very different things from a candidate's point of view. So we've got to make sure we drive into our client constantly about the job specification to make sure the job specification hasn't changed all the way through. We want to recap with ourselves on why work for the company, ensuring that our client is starting to mentally prepare for the interview. And what I mean by that is a lot of clients, and I'll talk about this later on, I find a lot of clients, although physically turn up for the interview, don't mentally turn up for the interview. They're not prepared for the interview. They don't understand the company's features and benefits and what's going on. And in this new world of work, knowing those type of benefits are going to be really important. With the client needs to understand why the candidate would enjoy working for them and what benefits of working for them will actually bring. So why they work for the company is really important. So when we're talking to a client about arranging the interview, again, we want to reiterate these things because again these are things that we can use to sell back to our candidate and entice our candidate and increase the desire of our candidates going from there. We need to then recap on the salary, the rates and the benefits and what I always think about when recapping salary is we need to know what the salary is that the client is actually offering and what the benefits are whether it be contract or perm we need to understand what that rate is or what that salary is and what the package is. We also need to understand, will they go above that for the ideal candidate? So if we've provided the ideal candidate and the candidate wants slightly more, can we go above that? So in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking about the candidate side. So those who've been on the courses before, we're always thinking about what the candidate would love to get, what their top rate is, what they intend to get, and what they must get from a salary point of view. So as long as when we're recapping the salary benefits and the rate benefits with our client, as long as they are above the must line, then we know there's a great opportunity that if offered, the candidate would accept. So we've got to make sure that we're covering that purposely. If the salaries all of a sudden are less than the candidate at that bottom must have are willing to accept, there's a bit of a question mark on why we've put this candidate forward in the first place, but the bigger question mark is why the client is now asking to interview the candidate. So we've got to make sure that we cover that bridge with the client because we don't want a mixture of sales, sorry, a mixture of salaries and benefits mismatching what each other's expectations are. So we've got to make sure we cover that all the way through. We need to establish any deal breakers. Is there anything that's going to happen in the business that might stop the deal from happening, might stop the placement from happening? What's actually going on? So is there anything that untoward that we don't know that potentially could be happening? And the last thing we want to set with the client is we want to set feedback time. We want to make sure that we have a feedback set constantly so we know when we can get hold of the client to gain feedback. Again, we want to make sure that normally that is straight after the interview and how we work that. And again, I'll talk about that a little bit later in the course. So as we move on, 
I want to look at what a rearranging the candidate and what rearranging the candidate is. And I think this is probably one of the most important calls that we make from a recruitment process. We need to make sure that we are preparing everything for ourselves. So we need to make sure that we prepare for the call. Have everything in front of you, the job specification, you know the salary, you know the benefits, you know the rates, you know why people want to work for the company, you know the interview process inside out and the schedule. And if you don't know any of these things, you've got to be honest with yourself. Because if you're going to go onto this call and you're going to get asked that type of question, you've got to go and find that out, which again, makes you look a little bit weak as a recruiter. It doesn't make you look as professional as you should look. So again, we've got to make sure we have everything ready for this part of the call. Selling to me is all about a transfer of enthusiasm. So we need to be genuinely enthusiastic about the call. We need to go on the call enthusiastic. We need to be working with the candidate to create, create enthusiasm, enthusiasm in the candidate. So we need to make sure that we have, I have some great news for you, Mr. Candidate. We need to build it up. We need to make sure that the candidate is really genuine about, or sorry, the enthusiasm is really genuine to the candidate about what we're pushing forward. So knowledge, again, is really key here to get that. We then need to requalify the candidate. Has anything changed this last time we spoke? We need to look for hesitations, look for lack of enthusiasm. Has anything changed? Has anything new appeared on the horizon? Have they got new interviews, new opportunities? Have they had a change of mind? We need to be understanding that now before we start actually even offering the interview to the candidate. What's changed since last we spoke? And you may have spoken to this candidate half an hour ago. Things could have drastically changed. They may have had a job offer in that last half hour. So we've got to make sure that we cover that Absolutely. The next thing we need to th think about is we need to recap the candidate's reasons for leaving. And I recap the candidate's reasons for leaving an awful lot because what candidates sometimes get is what we call money blind and they get scared about leaving, especially if their client is very high on the counter offer or they're getting a really big uh, increase in salary going to a new place. You've got to understand what their genuine reasons for leaving are. And most people's reasons for leaving aren't normally money. It's normally something to do with them or their boss, their career, or how they're treated by the company. So understanding those things that mean that when we go further down the sale and we get to the actual offer stage, we can start reusing these things to pull a hook into the candidate to ensure we get the decision that we want and that the candidate wants. We want to leave nothing out there in the open that the candidate can come back on. So again, recapping our reasons for leaving are really important. Reselling the position and the company and highlighting the benefits of working for the company, again, is something that I would want to prepare before I start to get onto the phone. So I'm, when I go on the phone with the candidate, I can resell those to the candidate straight away. I want to, again, reignite their desire to move. I want to reignite their interest and desire of working for a new company and what that would look like. So that means then we start talking about the benefits of working for the company and what that company actually will mean for the candidate. And if we've done our interview properly with the candidate beforehand, we should know what benefits they're looking for. We should have recapped that with our client. So now we can come back and recover that re recover those benefits with the candidate to ensure, again, we're really increasing the intrigue and the desire of the candidate to attend the interview. And the final thing I want to sort of recap with the candidate is obviously their salary and their, their money. So again, now I want to understand what, again, if they are still with the love that what they'd love to get, intend to get and must get. I want to recap these three things constantly throughout this process because if I make sure that what the client is offering is more than what they are willing to accept, then we are in a really good position. And if the client is offering more than the must have, and they're definitely often going to accept on the must, then we know we've got a potential opportunity of getting a deal. The further up the chain that we get and the higher the candidate client's offering, the better we are. But how if the client offers something which is below the minimum they accept, accept we're going to be in trouble. So we need to make sure we prepare the candidate to understand lightly what the offer is, but we need to understand what the candidate's thought process is. Has that changed since last time we spoke? So arrange the interview. We also, once we start that process, we need to test the candidate. What's the most important thing to test or establish before the interview 
and why is really we need to pre-close on everything that we're doing and that's pre-closing on the salary. So once I've started to arrange the interview and I've gone through that limbs situation, I'm going to point blankly ask the candidate, if my client offered you X, which I'd either love to have or intend to have, would you accept? I know what my client's going to offer, so I know where I can pitch this. So I'm looking for an answer from there. If they get yes, we go, however, if my client then came back to me and offered you Y, which is their lowest rate, their must have, would you accept? And I'm looking purely for a simple answer. I'm looking for a yes, no answer on these. I want to know if it's yes, great, I can move forward. If it's no, I want to know why. And the reason I want to know why is because if the person's not willing to accept the salary now, I've got to really consider, do I offer the interview or do I, do I withdraw the interview at this stage? I see too many candidates being pushed to interview by consultants where the salary or the rate hasn't been confirmed and hasn't been pre-closed. And by doing that, we know that we're going to have a problem further down the line. I'd rather negate that problem now and address it right now than have it to address it when the candidate and the client now want the job and they're both varying over pitches of money and things like that because that becomes a very crude and horrible negotiation. So if we cure it now, then we're in a far better position to move forward. I want to make sure that I have arranged the most urgent candidate first. In this marketplace, as we come out of this, there's going to be candidates that are going to be absolutely looking to move, and they may have other requirements on there. So I want to make sure I address my most urgent candidate first to get them into the client's interview process. However, if I've closed my client and I've got my client interviewing all the candidates on the same day, which is the most preferred method of interviewing, then I've got to make sure what order I put my candidates in. So where possible, I won't put my best candidate in first, and I certainly won't try to put my best candidate last. If I've got four candidates, I'll put my best candidate in the third position. If I've got three candidates, I'll put them in my the middle position. If I've only got one or two candidates, then it makes no odds because I'm going to have to put them first or last. It makes no difference, but I can try and manipulate that. The reason why I want my best candidate not going first or last is I want to really give the client a good view of this is a reasonably good good candidate this is a great candidate this is my best candidate and then this candidate's a little bit low it makes your better candidate start to stand out so we can start to move that and push that forward we're now manipulating a little bit of the recruitment process to ensure that your best candidate actually stands out what i've got to start to think about when i'm talking to candidates is are they now becoming unreasonable so i want to ask them honestly you know, if they're pushing back on salary or they're pushing back on rate, you know, I've got to start to think about and they're now becoming unreasonable. This is not what we agreed in the first place. If we've agreed interview times and dates with them in the past and they're now neg neg negating back and get back as backtracking from those, again, we want to know why. If they have some different reasons for, for leaving or they want to try and increase their salary or rate, again, we want to know why. What we don't want to become is the champion of lost causes, just putting candidates forward to jobs just because we think there's a prayer of getting that candidate through the interview process. If a prayer and hope are your strategy, then you're going to be sorely disappointed at the end of this process. So we've got to make sure we're not becoming the champion of lost causes. We're putting people who are genuinely interested and genuinely will accept the offer if taken or if offered, sorry. We need to then confirm everything by email and ask them to confirm back and we need to arrange interview preparation time again to make sure we're coming back to them. We also need to make sure that we're discussing any potential deal breakers and that could be location, partner or spouse, counter offers. We need to make sure we cover absolutely everything. Once we start to cover all of these things, what we're doing is we're actually preparing the candidate and we've prepared the client to be in a winning mentality when they move forward. We also need to make sure that we are 100% positive that what we're putting towards the client and the candidate is a match. And there's a really high possibility that those two matches will come together and create the offer that we're looking for. 
what we can't afford to do is keep sending mismatches because that means we have to do the recruitment process over again which is a double cost to yourself so interview preparation again why do we need to prepare for an interview as we said potentially is a rich man's breakfast but a poor man's teeth not co converted so we have the potential in the interview we now need to prepare to convert and the more we prepare to convert the more the chances are you have of increasing your win-win-win ratio as we talked last week on the, the 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 webinar last week we talked about interviewing candidates those that have been interviewed face to face when we look at the stats on average have a higher placement ratio than those that have been interviewed over the phone when we start backtracking into what client, uh, consultants have done with regard to preparing candidates for interview those that have been prepared for interview and the consultant have spent more than 30 minutes on the phone increases their opportunity of placement by 50 percent and the more time you spend with the candidate the more that percentage increases so it's really about preparing both sides of the parties to win and win properly so i've spoke to some people and i've sort of looked at the stats you know we spent five minutes preparing this candidate 10 minutes preparing this candidate and they wonder why the candidate loses so we've got to make sure that we have the optimum opportunity to make the placement at the end of the day and that's all about preparation so the first person we need to prepare is the can is the client and it's really important every client situation will be different to some degree you need to understand what the position is about and how your candidate matches up to the job specification culture and career opportunities we've got to make sure that we understand everything that the client wants so we've got to establish has anything changed since last we spoke we need to drive uh, or work together to gather more information because the more information i can pull out of my can client now the more i can help prepare my candidate to pass the interview that's going to take place i need to know the job spec inside out and i need to be looking for things that may have changed i need to know what is important to the client therefore it needs to be highlighted to the candidate what is important so i need to look at those important things to make sure that when i'm speaking to my client i can highlight what it is that really is the key driver behind the position and the key things the candidate requires therefore i know what the candidate should be selling to the client when they meet i need to understand my client's issues i need to know what is going to happen if this position isn't filled i need to understand how the candidate can cure my client's problems and i need to need to remind here the client of the issues they're currently having now whether this role has been open for a long time or it's brand new open we need to understand what the headache to our client will be if not filling if they don't fill this position and how your candidate can help them with the problem they've got therefore again we're pushing into the client's mind of this candidate already working for them how they're solving the client's problems and that way we can start to really drive the client forward in the proper way to ensure that your candidate gets a really thorough interview which matches the skill set that we've put forward we need to sell the candidate's strengths and match them we need to match the strengths against what the client needs on the job spec we need to use proofs so anything that the client the candidate has given you as evidence of those strengths we need to use that if we used video in the interview pr process stage and we've presented that video to the client again highlight the video highlight what was said in the video resend the video to the client so the client can see that because we need to sell the candidates benefits all the way through the process and the more we sell the candidates benefits what they've achieved the skills they've got the industry knowledge they've got the behavioral side of the, of the candidate and how that will fit in with the client the more we're creating the desire from the client to actually offer the candidate as with the candidate comes through that process we need to inform the client of the candidates other opportunities of what the candidates got what's got what the candidate has got going on again this is a, a part which a lot of recruiters shy away from and really this is the part that we need to be pushing down the client as well because if the candidate is red hot to the client 
we need to make sure that the client isn't sat on the offer process or sat on the decision making process whilst the candidate is getting snapped up elsewhere and as the market starts to return good candidates irrespective of whether it's in a downturn or an upturn are always sought after so the client has to move quickly to ensure that the client gets what they want so we need to ensure we can inform the client of the candidates hot buttons the candidate on their reasons for leaving why they're looking to join a new company because these are the things we want our client to sell back to our candidate during the interview process so again increase the desire from the candidate to want to work with the client and vice versa reminding the client that they need to sell their company and they need to sell the opportunity to the candidate irrespective of whether they have other opportunities or not and finally we need to reconfirm what the client is willing to pay so again we are trial closing the client and we're making sure what they are willing to pay and willing to offer will be above what the candidate has already said they will accept we need to keep doing this again i come across so many consultants who haven't done this and then the client changes their mind and offers something different so it's really important that all the way through the process we lock this down we record it because once we have this locked in we want to be really emailing the client back who they're interviewing the time of the interview and the salary expectation that the candidate has and that you have agreed with the client therefore we're locking the client in more and more into the process so interviewing candidates so here's a great debate I always think about candidates when I get them on to interview and I always think I am glad I am not that candidates relative the reason why I always think about that and talk about that because if I was an insurance company would I insure a candidate to turn up for interview we've all had the stories how many candidates have a sudden death in the family of a relative how many people are suddenly sick before the interview process how many bosses suddenly call their people into work for an emergency when there was no emergency before that how many people get lost and never actually show up for the actual interview they simply disappear so really what we need to be doing is preparing the candidate constantly to ensure that they are the best prepared they can be when they arrive at the interview process and that they genuinely arrive so ringing them the day before certainly isn't the best case we've got to make sure that we choose our opportunities properly we've got to make sure that when we prepare the candidate for interview we cover every single prospect so preparing the candidate for interview we've got to call the candidate daily between the offer of the interview and the interview taking place we need to make sure if we do that we have a reason to actually call so the first thing we need to make sure is there's nothing changed since last we spoke we need to understand whether they've got new opportunities that presented themselves and what stage are they at but when we start talking to the candidate now we need to confirm the actual dates and the time of the venue we need to make sure what's going on that we understand that they understand what the date is the time is and how they're going to get to the actual location of what's going on we need to make sure that the client sorry the candidate understands that if they're going in rush hour what does that mean from a, a traffic point of view if they get there and they're having to park where are they parking do they understand how far the car park is from the actual venue do they have to pay for the car park is that car park a card car park or is it a cash card park have they got enough change to pay for the car park etc we need to make sure if they're going by public transport you know how far is the client from the end of that public transport where public transport stops is it a taxi ride how easy is it to get a taxi etc so again we're confirming all of these things we need to reconfirm the reasons for leaving again to make sure we're covering everything that we understand about the candidate's reasons for leaving we need to confirm what the candidate knows about the client if you've done your interview prep right from the first call and you've sent the, the candidate an interview email 
and that interview includes the location, the time, the date, but also links the client's website and details about the client. We want to make sure that the candidate has actually read those types of information and they understand what the client is actually looking for. So we need to make sure that they have done some research on the candidate and we make sure they've done research on the specific job that they're looking to go to. We need to go back over the vacancy and resell the benefits. We need to make sure we sell the benefits of working for the client again and re-establish what we re-established in the first call again. We need to establish dress code. And dress code is a really, really interesting one. And I've often said on dress code that you should always err on the side of caution, irrespective whether it be a face-to-face -face interview or a video interview. If you're going for an interview, shirt, Business smart is what I class, so from a men's shirt and tie and a jacket from a lady, you know, nice attire from a business point of view. From there, we need to make sure that we're absolutely on point, irrespective of whether it's a video interview or a face-to-face -face interview. We need to make sure that they understand what that process is. If it's a video interview, we've got to make sure that the background of that interview is really uh, appropriate for the client to see. We need to ensure that the client understands those sort of things. We need to make sure that things like their LinkedIn profile, anything they put on Facebook or Twitter, there's not untoward. So we need to make sure we do all those sort of things. So discussing the interview process with the candidate is really, really important. That process of what the client's going to go through them with, again, is important for them to take on board so they understand how they're going to pass that interview. The final thing again is we need to trial close the candidate and we need to keep trial closing the candidate on salary and whether they'll accept all the way through the process. So if you've got four or five days between um, booking the interview and the interview taking place, have a reason to call every day have a different reason to call every day. And every day you're upping the desire constantly of that candidate to work for them. You're helping the client candidate constantly. It's all about service. So we're gonna drive into that service from there. But there are key things that we need to coach the candidate on during the interview preparation stage. We need to coach the candidate on interview skills. Contractors get interviewed a fair amount, but still they need advice and offer on how to pass um, an interview. Candidates on the perm side, you know, it could be three, four, five, 10, 15 years since they've last been for an interview. So we need to really outline simple things to them. And there are simple things that I always say are prevalent. And the first thing is, where does the interview start? If you, especially if you're going on client site, we'll, we'll use video later. But if you're going on client site, where does the interview actually start? And to me, the interview starts as soon as you drive into the client's car park. You may be met by a gatekeeper. You may have people that you bump into in the car park. You never know who those people are. So always treat them with courtesy and be polite to them. When you meet the actual receptionist or the gatekeeper, be polite to them. Because remember, first impression counts. And I know a lot of clients that come out of the interview and then will instantly talk to people on the desk. What did you think of that person? And if you were rude or ignorant or just non community with that person, then you're going to get not a great reception from that person. And that is their perception of you. So if that's their perception of you, it may be different from the client. So you've got to make sure that you're doing your utmost as soon as you step on site. If we're doing by video, Okay, again, that first 30 seconds of that video is really important. How you greet each other and how you talk to each other is really important because we haven't got the handshake. So it's going to be all about eye contact. It's going to be all about how you present yourself on the video. So you've got to make sure that they are understanding how a video interview actually works. In face to face, that handshake is the first thing that comes out. So again, we want to make sure that both parties understand what type of handshake. You know, you want a nice firm handshake with eye contact. One thing that I always do is if I'm sending a candidate for interview or if I'm going to visit a client, I never sit down in reception. 
The last thing I want is a client coming up to me and I'm sat down and I'm struggling to get out of a chair or something or I'm reading a paper, etc. that's on the desk and it's there for you to read. I'm always up, moving. So when the client comes in, I can shake their hands and look them straight in the eye. I am ready to go straight away. So I'm on there. And what we've got to remember is that whether face-to-face -face or whether over video, body language is 55% of the conversation and that means how you approach things on video how you approach things face to face is really important so eye contact mirror and matching is really important helping the candidate to understand that there's more than just the first impressions it is eye contact it is mirroring so teach them how to mirror if the client leans back they should lean back if the client leans forward they should lean forward and learn to mirror what the client is doing Okay, do not invade the client's space unless the client is inviting you to invade that space by leaning forward. It's all body language that's showing interest and desire. Leaning back their thinking, coming forward, they want to know more information from that person. Learn how to mirror, but make sure they're not sat there with their arms closed, you know, folded, because that's a very closed situation. But again, I see lots of people in interview sat there with their arms closed. I actually feel that very comfortable. But is it comfortable because it's a protection point of view or is it comfortable because it's genuinely comfy? So I always have to make sure that I work really hard to keep my hands moving and my hands out there. So I make sure I'm not doing that. Answering questions are really important. We need to make sure that we have a story to tell. We need to make sure that we have a story to tell the client. It's not just one word answers. It's not just yes, no answers. We need to make sure that we are absolutely on point with our questions. And we are, even if they ask a closed question, we want to be asking, answering it in an open way. The candidate should know their own strengths and weaknesses. So you should be telling them about what their strengths are and help them to build stories around their strengths. You should know what their weaknesses are because if it's a good interview, they'll be asked about their weaknesses. So tell them how they, what their weaknesses are and how they can combat that weaknesses and how their strengths are going to outweigh that and what's going on. Give them the stories to tell to the client to help them pass that interview. We need to hit the client hot buttons. So again, we should be telling the candidate what the client really wants to hear from them. What part of their past history do they really want to understand? What areas should you be really creating really good solid stories about? To again, increase the client's desire to want to work with them. We need to make sure we're hitting those hot buttons constantly. And we need to make sure if there's any other deal breakers. And I'll tell you a story, a genuine story about one deal breaker that I negated uh, back in 1998. And it sounds like a long time ago and people might think, oh, well, it's so long ago. Well, in 1998 was the start of the millennium bug and the start of things going crazy on a contract market. I had a contract tester. At the time, the contract testers were getting paid between 250 and 300 pounds a day. The millennium bug came in. There was zero testers available in the marketplace. I had a contract tester going for interview in Leeds, £1,500 a day at a 25% margin. He would be there for 18 months. So it was certainly an interview that I didn't want to mess up. So I'd gone through all my preparation with my candidate and I asked this question, is there anything else I should know about you that the client should know before we go to interview? And the client the candidate said, well, strange, you're one of the only people who've asked me ask that question because there is. I am six foot nine. I am 28 stone. When I was 18, I had a motorbike crash and I have a scar that goes from the middle of my forehead right down my right eye, right across my face from there. It looks like someone's tried to cut my head off with an ax. I have a black orb rather than a glass eye. And I was like, oh, that sounds strange. Sounds a huge man. Sounds a scary looking man. And you have a black orb. Why a black orb? He said, well, I'm a big cuddly giant, but if I had a glass eye and I was staring at people, people thought I was being really aggressive. So I was getting myself into lots of fights. So I put it into a black orb. I informed the client. I went to see the client before the interview and informed what was going on, which was a good job because the head of IT was a gentleman. The head of um, testing was a lady and the head of HR was a lady. And both ladies said, unless you'd have told us that, 
then we'd have been really, really worried about this man coming into the interview because he'd look scary. I met the candidate beforehand. I took the candidate to the interview and introduced them to the client. That was the deal breaker. Both ladies said they would not have engaged with that candidate because they'd have been too scared. But once they broke the water and broke the ice with them, they were absolutely happy. So finding out any deal breakers is really important. We've got to make sure the final part on the candidate is really confirming the salary and the rate. And I've talked about this several times already. So we need to confirm what they would love to have, intend to have, and what they must have. And remember, once we get money sorted, if the client is willing to offer more than they are willing to accept, then we know there's a great opportunity, if offered, that the candidate will accept. But we've got to make sure this doesn't change because money changes constantly. So trial closing the candidate on these is really important. So to confirm, if you like the role, you'll take it as long as the client will pay you X. We need to make sure that the X is their must have rate because that's the lowest rate that they've got, which means we can always go up from them, from there. We need to make sure that candidates don't talk money during the interview because money becomes a really hard subject to broach for a lot of clients. You know, if a client asks what they're on, they should say, I am currently on this salary. If you say what you're looking for, they need to be pushing back. I'm sure my agent has told you what my expectations are. We want to make sure that the candidate's expectations and your expectations are aligned. There is nothing different from there. We need to make sure that the candidate doesn't get himself into a situation where the client says, oh, well, you're on 35. I'm going to offer you 36. And the candidate says, yes, but you've put them through at 42. So we need to make sure that the candidate understands what they've been put forward at and that if they're asked about their, their rates, if they are pushed, tell them what they were on before and then push us back to the agency because that's what they're paid for. We need to make sure we work from there. So money is a really interesting one. So don't talk money. We need to make sure the candidate has the right to work. We need to check visas there and we need to check there is nothing in the candidate's background that will prevent the candidate from being offered the position. Once we can do that, we know we're in a really good position. So to help the candidate further, as we discussed last week, we should train the candidate on the STAR technique. We should train the candidate on competency-based interviewing. So if the client asks a question, we don't just get a one answer to that question or a very short answer. So if the candidate can say, let me talk to you about the situation I was in. So they set the scene and then they talk about the task. The task was this. And then they talk about the actions and the results that they, they got. Then all of a sudden, it means they're giving a lot more information to the client that they would normally give. It means that the client is getting a lot more information that should be hitting the client's hot buttons and therefore increasing the desire of the client to buy the candidate. So we've got to really work hard and drive that in. So as we work there, okay, we got to look at those little extras and those little extras that make a difference. Okay. If the candidate smokes, ask them, but ask them not to smoke before the interview. And this is a very old school thing. You know, if the client doesn't smoke, but the candidate does, when the candidate walks in, if they've just had a cigarette in the car park, your client can really smell that. And sometimes it's very off-putting. So make sure the candidate is aware of that. Make sure the candidates have a list of questions to ask at the end and make sure the candidate is taking notes. Tell the candidate to smile. It's an interview. It's an interview for a job. It should be a joyous occasion. It's not an interview by the police. So they should be nice and relaxed and work from there. They should be positive, but they should never badmouth their previous employer. We need to recover that handshake and make sure that they're good. And we should make sure that their pre-interview chat between reception and interview room is good conversation, right conversation. We now have video coming in. So again, when that video starts, how does the candidate start that breaking down the client to be a more formal type of situation? So again, what can we do where we have that pre-interview chat part what can we do on interview? How can we coach the candidate in that part to ensure that they encapsulate the client all the way through there? So interview preparation, the trial close. I always ask, is there anything that you'd like to ask me 
before you go for interview. I will then ask them how many other interviews they have on the go, what other stage they're at, when will you hear from them. I want to call every day before. I then call them the day before to wish them well. I never call them on the day of the interview because to me that sounds like you just don't trust the candidate to turn up for interview. And a lot of you will be shouting, yeah, but they might not turn up for interview. I want to know that. You'll know that because the candidate probably won't tell you that, but the client will tell you five minutes after the interview is meant to start that the candidate hasn't turned up. If you can demonstrate to the client that you've done all of these things, then you're in, in, a, in pretty good ground. But I always feel if you ring the candidate the day before or the hour before the interview, you're just checking to make sure that guy's turning up. You're just checking to make sure that you're going to be able to write the paycheck at the end of the month. Have their interest at heart. Trust them. You need to make sure that they are showing interest and that creates urgency. If you show interest with them, it will create urgency with them. So setting that feedback time to call you is really important and they should be calling you as soon as they exit the interview. If you're doing a video interview, you can do the introduction on that interview. You could also do the exit of that interview and therefore you have the candidate there on video so you can take immediate feedback. We then talk about taking interview feedback and the old two ears and one mouth is really, really prevalent here. We should be listening to the candidate constantly through this period. If your interviews are on the same day, if you listen to what the candidate, first candidate has to say, you can then start preparing your remaining candidates instantly. If it's over a couple of days, you can obviously do that. But we need to listen to the candidate. We need to assess positives. Is the candidate selling the role back to us? Are they talking a positive way about the client? Are we picking up really good vibes of what they're saying? If they're having negative comments, can we understand what they're saying? when listening to the candidate and the way they speak, are they speaking in a way that sounds like they are saying the right words, but it just lacks total enthusiasm. It just lacks total commitment. So we need to be looking for all these buying signals when we're starting to take feedback. And again, once we start to get that feedback, we need to trial close on the salary, okay, on the start date, and we need to inquire if there's anything that would prevent them from taking the job and we need to discuss the counter offer and what's going to happen. So we need to make sure that we're doing all of these things all the way through the uh, closing, uh, the taking feedback, sorry, of the candidate to ensure that when we get to a close, we're there. The counter offer should have been covered all the way through as we've talked about in other processes, but now the counter offer becomes a realistic because if the candidate is really excited about the role, we need to make sure that the counter offer is absolutely covered. I want to know what happened the last time someone in that candidate's organization resigned. How did the client react? Did they counter offer? Did they march the person off site? What did they actually do? Because that gives me an indication of potentially what might happen to my candidate. So I need to make sure that I'm all over that and I'm doing the right thing. Interview feedback is really important. We need to take what we've learned from the interview process and inform our next candidates what to brush up on. But we need to take note of what they've said because we need to brush up on our recruitment processes for each individual client because they'll be slightly different. So if you can start to see little trends, you can start to see things that are happening during the recruitment process that can improve our process and our supply to the client, then we need to be making note on it. We need to be changing our process accordingly to make sure we do the right things constantly. So candidate feedback, we need to make sure we know your candidate's feelings. Can they and will they be able to do the job? And they are the two most important things that we're looking for. Can they do the job? Will they do the job? I need to look for deal breakers all the time. Is there anything to prevent this deal from happening? I want to know their thoughts on the company. What was the company like? Can they see themselves working at the company? I want to know their thoughts on the interviewer or the manager. Can they see themselves working for that interviewer and that manager? I want to know if there's a reason why they would not accept the role. 
not why they would accept the role. Is there anything the reasons that would stop you accepting? It's a real different question and you get a real different answer from that question. So I want to know why they would not accept just in case, because they might say be really positive. There's no reason why you wouldn't accept just to bring that extra little thing out. That thing that might bite you at the end of the day, if the client does offer, we need to make sure we know those things. I want to know areas that they felt were a good match and areas that were not, because I want to be able to address any areas that were not almost instantly on the phone, or I want to be able to address it with my client straight away when I go back to my client. So honesty, is the best approach here. I want to be able to approach the client with honest feedback. I want to address any potential issues early because I'm going to take feedback from the client and my feedback now needs to mirror my candidates. So what I'm looking for, I don't want generic feedback. I need to push for positives and push for negatives. I want to make sure I do an excellent service and learn what I could do better because we should never stop learning. And this is the key is when the client now starts to feedback. So how did it go? Again, I'm looking for negatives. I'm looking for negatives so I can address them. I want to probe, especially for reasons, the job, or I want to probe for reasons why any specification that the client comes out with was not on the job specification because that means I've missed something early down the line. I want to look for positives and I want to reinforce the positives. I want to sell the candidate back to the client and build interest and desire with the candidate. I want to know what did they like about the candidate. I want to look at buying signals. I want to expand those signals because I can use them when the client comes to actually offer. Did the candidate actually meet your brief from a skills point of view, from a behavioral point of view? Did the candidate enhance the client's skill set? Did the candidate bring the client's uh, uh, sort of position to life? Can the client see the candidate working in their role for them? I want to see these type of things. And if I can start to drive these things into the client, then I start to create a better opportunity all round. How well did my client, candidate fit into their current team? Did they meet the team? Did you see them working for you? And sometimes the way that you prepare the candidate, you're asking them to say, if I was working for you, if I was working in that position, if I was doing that in the position, in the way they're answering questions to the client, the client then starts to get that visual image of the candidate actually doing that role for them. So it's projects them actually working in the business, which again makes it easy for you to close. Behaviorally, did they fit the, beam, the team's ethos and the business? Did they fit that? Because remember, most clients hire on skills, but fire on behaviors. As we come out of COVID, behaviors are becoming more and more important. So really, if we have the behavioral side nailed down, because it's very hard to coach and train behaviors it's a lot easier to coach and train skills so we need to make sure behaviorally did they fit in the business and how do they compare to other candidates that they've seen this question will help you build your knowledge on the client's recruitment process and how you are comparing at this moment in time are you hitting the mark as we move down through the client's process we need to start to think Part of the interview process is to transition the candidate from interview to offer stage. And that's all about the deal breakers. So how interested are you in offering the candidate is a question that you need to ask the client, irrespective of whether the client has given you lots of negatives, ask, are they interested in offering the candidate? If yes, we need to find out why. We need to recap what the offer will be. We need to ensure they are the convicted to the actual offer, that's why they have conviction to the actual offer and actually work from there. If not, we need to find out why they're not going to offer because they find out why they're not going to offer means we have to readdress our recruitment process and then move on. If they are going to offer the candidate, we need to know what they're going to offer. And if they are offering below what we know, above, sorry, what the candidate is going to accept, we know we've got a really good opportunity now of making a deal. 
However, if they're going to offer below those expectations, we need to find out now why that is. But we also need to find out what they could trade with our candidate, okay, to make that offer look good. Whether that be there'll be a salary review in the first three months and we'll give your back to where you should be and maybe more. We'll give you training that will increase on this, et cetera, et cetera. We're giving you extra holidays, whatever it be. We need to find out what those things will be. We need to make sure when we look for things to sweeten the deal that they are of interest to the candidate. So are they hitting the candidate's hotspots? We need to know what stage is. If it's a second stage interview, if it's not already booked, it should be booked. If it's an offer, we need to get the client to offer, write the offer to us in full so we know exactly what we've got. However, we are now in a situation where if we're videoing it, we can video what the client is saying to us. And again, if we are smart and the client is smart, we could use that video and say, what I'd like to do, Mr. Client, is video you giving the offer to me so I can then present that video to the candidate. So again, it really sort of ties that human nature in that we're now offering from there. If we then get the offer accepted by the candidate, again, we should be videoing that. So again, we can then push that back back forward to the client. Again, it ties people a bit tighter together. It's harder for them to turn around and then reject that offer at a later date. So to conclude, we need to make sure constantly to get a win-win situation, we need to prepare. You need to prepare your client as much as you prepare your candidate. You cannot leave anything to chance. You need to test your candidate's commitments by trial closing. You need to spend time preparing your candidate and your client to meet the better the opportunity of converting this into cash will appear the more time you spend helping your candidate and your client to prepare for this meeting the return on investment in it will only happen if you control the process and provide a service that is second to none the service that we're talking about is the service that's gonna separate you from other recruiters. Why would a candidate use you again? Why would a client use you again? Why would a client recommend you? It's interesting, speaking to candidates that have gone through a really thorough interview preparation process, they are more inclined to talk to your client or your new client about the process, again, confirming how good you are. They are more prepared to pass your, their details onto somebody else Okay, so you're getting recommendations and they're more likely to give details of their past employer so you can work on the backfill because they feel comfortable in what you've done. If you just do a slapdash recruitment process, then you get that slapdash result from the end of it. And no matter how much technology enters our industry, interview preparation will always be an interaction between human beings. It will always be about you talking to the candidate and talking to the client. It will be always about you controlling that process. Once we've gone through this process, we then move on to the offer process. So that is interview preparation and taking interview feedback. If you've got any questions, I'd love to hear any questions. Um, if you've got any thoughts, I'd love to hear your thoughts uh, for you. Uh, Natalie's sent a story in. Um, Natalie, do you want me to tell that story or do you want to tell it yourself? I'm ha quite happy to let you on the the the, uh, the airwaves and tell it yourself. Just waiting for Natalie to, to answer on there. If any guy has got any questions, oh, ha, ha, I can tell it apparently. Okay, so the story is Natalie was on Zoom networking event recently where we were required to do a one minute pitch. A business owner was doing his pitch, it was clear he was reading from a script. And then all you hear midway through the pitch is, you've got this from the web. Well, you can imagine the rest of us on the call were absolutely wetting ourselves. So it's interesting that, you know, if you do steal things, make sure you personalize it and make it yourself <laughs> uh, from there. Um, if no one's got any questions, I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, Siobhan, thank you very much for your kind words, much appreciated. I hope you're starting to get an understanding that Doing the core basics separate those that are good at recruitment from those that excel at recruitment. And when we come out of the marketplace, those that excel at recruitment 
will be making lots of placements. I'm speaking to, speaking to lots of recruitment people already at this moment, through this moment in time, and it's interesting. Those that excel at recruitment are still making placements now and averaging between one and two placements a month. Why? Because their clients trust them. Why? Because they have a thorough process and they do not cut corners. Cutting corners will lead to problems. Lauren has a question. What happens if a client doesn't want to commit to a salary before the interview? Lauren, if the client doesn't want to commit to a salary before interview, I'd be questioning why that client is actually interviewing. You know, if they won't commit to an interview, uh, an interview with a salary, it's a really hard situation because all you're doing is then putting a candidates up for an opportunity that may never materialize. I would be really pushing back. It is a poor way from a client to represent themselves in the marketplace. If client candidates go for lots of interviews and keep getting rejected because they're too expensive, then it's just a waste of time. Why dangle a carrot in front of a client that the client can't afford in the first place? So you need to push back on your client constantly and make sure you get a salary before interview. It's really, really bad form to send a candidate to an interview where a salary has not been agreed. If anybody else has got any questions, feel free to fire them through. If not, again, thank you very much for your time. It's been much appreciated. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week uh, on the webinar. Um, and all that leaves me to say is stay safe, stay healthy, and have a super finish to the week. <laughs>